God is good. All, all the time. time. All the time. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Welcome to this virtual worship service within the sanctuary of the First Congregational Church of Williamsburg, Massachusetts on this second Sunday of Christmas, which we'll be celebrating Epiphany. We will be celebrating communion. Please have your bread and cup ready as we share communion today virtually. We're delighted that you were with us and hope your spirit will be lifted as we share communion in the midst of this troubling time. Let us pray. God of winter sky, light a star on our horizon, for we need to lift our weary eyes and our worn souls from the plague that keeps us apart. Grant us the vision to see the growing light at the end of the tunnel. As we look up and out beyond ourselves, may we glimpse your wonder to be struck in awe and to marvel at your love. God of the winter sky, light a star on our horizon and a song in our hearts this epiphany. Amen. Scripture this morning is in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born the King of the Jews? For we have seen his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising. And it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their, way, their own way by another road. This is the reading for this morning. The Jesuit theologian Walter G. Burkhardt tells about a king of Balkan, now part of northern Afghanistan. And he names Ephraim in Adam, who was a wealthy monarch. One night the king was roused by fearful stomping on the top of the roof above his head. Alarmed, he shouted, Who's there? A friend came to reply from the roof, I've lost my camel. Perturbed by the, such stupidity, the king, the king screamed, You fool, are you really looking for your camel on the roof? You fool, a voice from the roof calmly answered. Are you looking for God in silk clothing and lying in a golden bed? The story goes on to tell how these simple words filled that king with awe, that he rose from his sleep to become one of the most remarkable saints of Islam. The camel on the roof raises for us the epiphany question. Where are you looking for God? 
The compelling question properly stands at the beginning of a new year. Just as where have you found God serves as the cap of the year that is closing. So where have you found God in the year now past that has been filled with fear and division, anger and grief? Where will you look for God in this new year that promises to get both worse and then a whole lot better? These are questions for you to answer. I can't answer them for you. But as you search for answers, remember, the good news of Epiphany is that God is found in the Incarnation, in the humility of birth in a stable. As startling as a camel on the roof is the Christian message that the vulnerability of homelessness and the suffering of death on the cross are also marks of God's most powerful work in human life. The story of the Magi reminds us the light that has come upon the little ones to share with the learned and the powerful, a light more brilliant than a thousand points of light shining in the darkness. We are called to offer a ministry of light and of illumination to those in power. As Carl F. Henry expressed with these words, the divine mandate is to beam light, sprinkle salt, knead bread into an otherwise hopeless world. Now that is a task worthy of wrestling with in the communion quiet of this morning. Amen. And he passed it around to his disciples 
saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the traditional cup of blessing and passed it around to his disciples, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink of this, all of you. This is poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Now, get your bread. Break it. Hold it in your hand for a minute. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ, broken for you, the bread of your salvation, the bread for your life's journey. Now take the cup, hold it in your hand for a minute, or if it's a glass, slosh it around a little bit. Look at the liquid. Take and drink, for this is the new covenant that we have in Christ's life, death, and resurrection. God is with you.
the crumbs from this holy meal as you tap the screen and rise from your chair or table. May you go with your worries lightened, your mind enlightened, and your hearts illumined by the love of God that is made manifest in Jesus Christ. Go in peace to create peace. Amen.